Hey, thanks for checking out my shop tour video. I'm Brett from Brett's Basement Woodshop, and welcome to my woodshop. I started this YouTube channel about a year and a half ago, and I figured it was time for a shop tour video. So here we go. We'll start with the shop itself. This is a small shop. This main room here is 176 square feet. Uh, it's about 16 and a half feet long, so two sheets of plywood, and then 10 and a half feet wide. And this little area back here is 30 square feet. It's um, about four feet nine inches across, and then just a little over six feet deep. So the two areas combined is 206 square feet. And when I bought this house, the basement was unfinished. And the floors were bare concrete, and some of the walls were bare concrete. There were some rooms built down here, but it wasn't really finished out. So I knocked down walls and put up new walls. Uh, as you can see, I put in a subfloor. And the reason I did that is because it's a basement and as you know concrete is porous and it allows vapor to penetrate through it at all times and even though we're at a relatively high elevation so flooding from the outside shouldn't be a problem but that vapor issue is what I was trying to mitigate so I put in a subfloor in the whole basement not just the shop and what that does is allow air to flow underneath the OSB subfloor so that that vapor can dissipate up and through the walls and that's worked out really well. There is no musty smell in this basement. It's super dry and climate controlled and it's beautiful. So yay me. Um, I would have loved to make the whole basement a wood shop, but I have a wife too. So <laughs> um, she, she won that battle. So on the other side of this door is a family room with a hundred inch projection screen and some couches. And then on the other side of the stairs here is a laundry room and then this shop. And I had two primary concerns other than, you know, the utility of the shop for my family's comfort. I wanted to um, minimize the amount of sound that penetrated the rest of the house and dust. I wanted to make sure that dust wasn't getting out of the shop. So for the sound, the ceiling and walls are insulated. For the walls that I did build, I used two by sixes at the sole plate and top plate, and then I staggered the two by four studs so that I could wrap insulation in between them. I don't have any video footage of that uh, when I was building it, but I do have some pictures, so I'll put those up on the screen. And the ceiling too is stuffed full of rock wool insulation. Rock wool, you may or may not know, is really fire retardant. So if, if a fire ever did start in here, it would take a long while for it to get to the rest of the house. So that insulation doesn't make it soundproof, but it does definitely dampen the amount of sound that's coming from the shop. You can still hear it when you're upstairs, but it's not nearly as noisy or intrusive as it would have been without the insulation. My family can still sit on the couch on the other side of this wall and watch a movie. They have to crank up the volume a little bit if I'm running tools, but they can still watch their shows. And for dust control, that's been working out pretty well too. This is an exterior door. So it's got a gasket all around. And this little room over here that looks like a sauna is not a sauna, though it does get kind of hot in the winter time because that's the furnace room. And I'll show you that in a little bit. I'm thinking about making a long version and a short version of this video. So depending on which one you're watching, there is another version out there. So if you want more detail, I have a tendency to ramble and over explain things. Thank God for video editing. But for those of you who want more detail, I'll have a longer version of this video, but if you're just looking for the quick and dirty, I'm gonna make one of those too. So depending on what your preference is, there is another version if you wanna switch over. I'll have links in the description to both. This drill press is one of the first woodworking tools that I bought, and it's a benchtop version, so it needed something to sit on. And I had this old desk that my grandpa built, so I turned it into a drill press stand. The legs on it were kinda wobbly, so when I flipped it over to inspect that and do some repairs, I noticed my grandpa's signature on the inside of this desk. So I thought that was pretty cool. He passed away in 1981 at the age of 70 when I was just 10 years old. So his memory is kind of distant, but it's really cool to have something that he built with his own hands. And though it's not the greatest drill press stand, it leaves a lot to be desired. It does have some storage, but mostly it's sentimental value because my grandpa made it. And then back here I just have just little off cuts and bits and pieces that we all collect. I just want to say a little bit more about this room that looks like a sauna. It does get pretty hot in the winter time, but it's not a sauna. It's the furnace room. And I made this room as small as I could so it wouldn't take up as much shop space, but still big enough to get around the furnace and do work on it if need be. When I was in the process of finishing out the basement, we had the good fortune or 
maybe it was God's providence that the uh, AC unit went out and so a furnace guy came over to do the repair and I was telling him my plans about building the shop and he recommended not having any kind of cold air return or any kind of communication between the shop and the furnace because we wouldn't want the dust being sucked up into the furnace and spread out through the rest of the house. So I'm really glad that that happened in that timing. Um, I had already bought this louvered door because I thought that the furnace needed to breathe, but he said that the fresh air intake that runs through pipes was enough for the furnace. But I had already bought the louvered door and though this room doesn't need to breathe, so I actually closed it off with plywood on the back side. And I put a gasket all around the door and then these ball catches to keep it tight closed. And I put a floor sweep on the bottom too to keep the dust out of the furnace room. I use this room for a little bit of dust free storage, but there's not a ton of storage space in there. Moving on to more woodworky things. This is my 14 inch resaw bandsaw from Grizzly. Uh, this was a gift from my wife. In fact, all the tools that I have were either purchased with my own money or a gift from my family, either Christmas or Father's Day, something like that. I don't have any sponsors yet, so none of these tools were given to me by tool companies. I either bought them with my own money or they were gifts from my family. But anyway, back to the saw. It's got a 12 inch resaw capacity. One thing I really don't like about it is the fence. When I, I get it set and then I lock it in, it changes. And I don't know how to get it to stop doing that. I've tried different adjustments and I just cannot get this this fence rail system to, to work well. So I may be upgrading that at some point. This dresser behind me uh, was my wife's and I think she got it from her grandfather or possibly great grandfather, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't remember the history or the story behind it. I really like having this in the shop because it gives me inspiration. I think it was beautifully done. I don't know if you can see the radiating grain pattern on it, but it's, you know, dovetail drawers and it's just a nice piece of furniture that gives me inspiration. And it keeps um, all kinds of small parts. This little guy over here is my shop vac, which is one of the noisiest machines in my shop. So to control the noise coming from the shop vac, I built an MDF box and lined it with carpet and just set that over the top of it. And that works pretty well actually. Operates on a remote. So I don't know how well that's picking up on the microphone here, but I'm sitting right next to it. I can run this without hearing protection, whereas I couldn't before. Usually I have this remote hanging from a drywall screw in the ceiling. And it's sitting on its original wheels, so it will, I can't, I can't do it while I'm kneeling, but it will kind of roll around if I need it to, but mostly it just lives in this little corner. The one big drawback of this though is that I built it kind of tight and it's a real wrestling match to get this box off of the shop vac if I ever need to change a filter bag or do something else with the vacuum. So of course I had a dust separator in front of this. I'm currently in the process of coming up with a new dust collection system and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, I actually made a video on that. I made two videos about this dust collector. I'll have links to those on screen here and down in the description. And part of that is um, I don't have any four inch ducting anywhere but I made these blast gates that will be incorporated into my new system. And I have a video on how I made these. These are a no leak plywood blast gate. And behind this door is what my family calls the dungeon. It's kind of a mess back here. What it is is a crawl space that is a dirt floor covered with plastic, but there's enough space between the dirt floor and the, the floor above. There isn't room for me to stand up fully, but I could do a duck walk or just kneel upright. And I like to joke around that all my daughter's ex-boyfriends are buried back there. That's a joke. That's not where they are but I just use it for some lumber storage and storage of other household items and half used paint cans and all kinds of DIY project stuff. Uh, it's a mess. I, I, there's not really a lot of room to move around. I don't like putting stuff in there because it's hard to get to, but at least I have a little bit more room for lumber storage that I don't have room for in this main part of my shop. This crawl space is about two thirds of the house's footprint. So there's a, a ton of untapped potential, um, but I don't think I'll ever dig it up and make a room out of it because that would unearth the boyfriends. 
and I don't want to do that. Just kidding. They're not there. Prior to building this bank of drawers and countertop, a lot of my small tools and supplies were in totes and cardboard boxes that were just kind of strewn everywhere. It was real chaos. So having a bunch of drawers of different depths has really been a big help for organization. There's still a lot more I'd like to do. I'm thinking about doing a French cleat wall here to have easier access to things. Have it visible, but up and out of the way. Thinking also about adding some cubbies up here for like my small hand tools. I don't like things sitting on the surface. So I want to get a lot of these things up and in their designated storage space. So that's definitely something I'm going to do eventually is more storage on this wall. And building this also gave me another work surface besides my table saw. Here's another area for future improvement. This area is kind of a mess. Right now it serves as storage for various offcuts of sheet goods, uh, things like that. My clamp rack is super simple. It's just a one by that is pocket hole screwed to the wall. So I definitely want to create some clamp storage that works better and looks better. Right now I just have everything clamped to the board, I'd, I'd really rather be able to just kind of pull it off and use it rather than having to undo it each time. I can't remember if I mentioned there's not a window in here or any kind of outside air, so the air can get kind of stuffy, especially when I'm wearing a mask and everything. A lot of people have those box air filters mounted to their ceiling. I just don't have the headspace for that, so I don't like putting things on the ceiling. So my air quality control is this box fan that I just put a cheap pleated furnace filter on, on the back of it, 20 by 20. So it works, kind of. I mean, it, do, it definitely does collect dust. I have to vacuum it off pretty frequently for it to continue to work right. That filter does fill up and so I have to vacuum it off from time to time and I can feel the air flowing through it as I'm vacuuming it. So it's definitely serving a purpose, but it's definitely limited. I'll take this time to mention too, the lights in here are all LED strips from American Green Lights. They're just, they're very low profile. I think they're meant as replacement lamps for a fluorescent light ballast, but I just have them um, screwed to the sheetrock and then the drivers are tucked up inside the ceiling, above the ceiling sheetrock here. I believe they're 24 watts each, and I don't remember how many lumens, but it's a uh, 5,000 Kelvin, which is about a daylight. So the light quality in here is, is great. I do have kind of a dark spot here. I'd like to add one more light strip here, but above the saws and work areas, the lighting's great. I do have a coupon code in the description for American Green Lights. You can get 10% off of lights if you're looking to upgrade the lighting in your shop. So moving around the corner here, I was a consumer on YouTube University for a long time before I became a contributor. And speaking of my YouTube channel, check this out. I just hit 1,000 subscribers today. So happy Father's Day to me. Most of what I've learned about woodworking, I learned on YouTube University. And I've gotten inspiration from all kinds of creators. I, to tell you the truth, I can't remember where the whiteboard miter box came from, but I've seen at least two, maybe three YouTube woodworkers that had a whiteboard as part of their dust shroud around their miter saw. So I didn't come up with the idea. I stole it from someone else. But I'll tell you what, it does, it's not 100%, but it does control the dust cloud that tends to get on everything from the miter saw. So I am glad I built it. And I built it out of scraps, except for the whiteboard. So it was cheap. And I made a video about that as well. And it's got its own dedicated shop back underneath and it's piped up through and into the floor of the dust shroud. As you can see here, this is where the stairs come down. So there's this weird little alcove kind of open closet area. And that's pretty nice because this is a 12 inch slider. So that slider bar has room to move back instead of being out in my shop and banging up against the wall. So that's why it's here. It's, I don't know if you can hear the dog barking. Um, it's less than ideal because I don't have a lot of room on the right side of the saw from the, I have it written up here, that from the miter saw blade to the wall is 42 and a quarter inches. So not even four feet. I also have up here from the edge of the planer, which we'll talk about next, to the wall is 69 and a half inches. So again, it's not a ton of outfeed space. So if I ever am putting anything longer through the planer, I have to unbolt it from its house here. That doesn't happen a lot, 
Most of the things I sent through are shorter. I can make small miter adjustments with the panels in place. I can still do like 10 or 12 degree, maybe. This way a little bit easier. Maybe up to 15 degrees this way. But anything wider than that, I just take, these are just on there with magnets. And then I can extend my wings all the way out. I can get all the way out to 70 degrees on this side. And I think I run into my, yeah, I run into my tabletop. Back in there is um, the vacuum port. And as you can see, there's a lot of room back here for dust to collect and, and I don't really care that it doesn't make it all down to the vacuum. The goal is just to keep it from coming out into the shop and it does work for that. And this is another idea that I stole from another YouTuber, can't remember who. Uh, actually, Woodshop Junkies, he's a guy in South Africa, I think. Also, there's several people who've done the flip top cart. So it's kind of a mixture of, of those ideas. This panel has to come off for this to work. And I didn't really plan this this way, but this um, part of the tabletop, when it sits on the miter saw, is just at the right height for outfeed for the planer. As you probably know, a planer weighs like 80 pounds, so it's nice to have it where I can just swing it up instead of lifting it up onto a tabletop or something like that. As you can tell, I don't really have a ton of floor space to have a rolling cart that I can push out of the way. So there's advantages and disadvantages of having this in this kind of permanent spot. I can unbolt it, but it pretty much lives here. I do not have a video of how I made this because that was pre-YouTube, but you can just see here I've got it mounted with, uh, I believe that's half inch? Yeah, it looks like half inch uh, gas pipe, threaded steel pipe. And then I have it capped off on the end so it doesn't slip out. Pretty thick mounting block that's glued and screwed and it's on an MDF base. One more thing I'll point out while we're talking about YouTube and creating videos is I've got my camera rigging mounted to the ceiling on half inch steel threaded pipe so I can position my articulating camera arm anywhere along this pipe in this sort of a U pattern. Before I mounted it to the ceiling, if I had something sitting on a tripod, whether it was on a countertop or on the floor, because of the subfloor, if I walked around or was running tools, the camera would shake and it would be a shaky video and I, I just hated that. It doesn't make for a good viewing experience. So getting it up on the ceiling prevents that. There's no floor shake and there's no ceiling shake, so that works. And again, precious floor space, so it's up and out of the way. I don't have to move it to walk around. Continuing on down the line this here. This is my outfeed table. It's attached to the saw cabinet with, I forget what the hardware is called, but it's some sort of lockable shelf bracket that ratchets up into place. And um, I got this idea from Colin Kinnett on Woodwork Web. He built something almost exactly like this. And he has the same rigid table saw. It just swings up into place and it doesn't want to lock anymore, so I have to manually do that yeah so it does its job of catching things coming off the back of the saw but it's not super stable um, so i don't do any work on it it's simply just an outfeed then i made a quick release trigger for both of the brackets so I can lower it back down with one hand. This has been needing an upgrade for quite some time. So I've been making plans to come up with a combination outfeed slash assembly slash workbench. Of course, it's gonna be on casters so that I can wheel it out of the way when I need to use the planer. And it'll be roughly the dimensions of the saw and I don't know, about 30 inches deep. I'm actually gonna come up with plans that I can offer for people to uh, I haven't decided if I'm gonna offer them for free or for purchase. Uh, that remains to be seen. But make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on because obviously I will be making video content about that build. Another thing about that outfeed table 
is I'm going to put my new dust collector inside of it. I got that idea from Travis on Shop Nation. I guess that's a good segue to the dust collector, so let me show you that next. So this is my new dust collection setup. This is the cheapest impeller motor that I could find on the interwebs. It's made by Bucktool. It has a 550 CFM, 6.5 amp, and of course a 4 inch opening. And then I repurposed my Rockler dust collector bucket and made a new top for it. Made another video about that to accommodate the 4 inch hose which I didn't have before. And like I say, I'll have integrated dust collection inside the mobile outfeed table, assembly table, workbench, multifunction table. I don't know what to call it yet. I'm not gonna give a demonstration because I don't wanna have to put a dust mask on, but it is a lot quieter than the shop vac, I'll tell you that. I don't feel like I have to use hearing protection when it's just out and about. But this is gonna be inside the workbench, so it'll be even quieter. You'll barely be able to hear it. But since I don't have that workbench built yet, this is just kind of out and about. It's, it's on wheels, but there's a lot to it. It's taken up a lot of floor space, so I'm constantly moving it to a new location to do my work. So it is kind of annoying in this current state, but I'm just dealing with it and putting up with it in the interim. And the last thing is my router table. It of course is on wheels too. It's on a Bora cart. And my oscillating belt and spindle sander lives underneath on the cart. This router table top did not come with the lift. That was an add-on. And I'm so glad that I added the lift because before that I had to get on my knees and work above and below the table and it just was hard to do, inaccurate and a, kind of a pain to change bits. But now I can do it all from above the table and that's so much easier. So definitely recommend a router lift if you have the money for it. So that's all I've got for the shop tour. Thanks for joining me. I hope you got some tips and tricks out of it. Um, feel free to steal any of the ideas that you saw me use. That's what I did. I just go out there on the YouTubes and collect ideas and make it work for my shop. I had a lot of fun showing you around my shop. I hope you enjoyed it too. Give it a like if you did. If you have any ideas of how I could do things differently, any comments, any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I do definitely read all the comments. I mean, I only have a thousand subscribers, so it's not that hard. I do reply to most of them as well. If you want to have more of a back and forth conversation with me, check me out on Instagram. I'll put the link on the bottom, also the link in the description. That way we can have more of a conversation. You can't really do that as well on YouTube. So we'll see you on the next video. Until next time, my friend, be safe and love each other. Hey, thanks for check, uh, checking. I'm Brett from Brett's Basement. Whoa. Did I say that right? <laughs> this is... I'm filming, so that's fun. Ouch, I gotta get off my knee. <coughs> and this has its own dedicated... Oh, gosh, that got tight. Okay. That used to... <laughs> they used to come out of there easier. Maybe because it's summertime. Oh my gosh! There. <laughs>